Today I want to show you the progress of my 3D printed gas engine, but before I do... Did you know that like Porsche 3D prints pistons for the GT2 RS? Basically the same technology they're using to put a car around the Nürburgring in a record breaking time is the same one we're doing to make stuff like this. <laughs> well, not really, but... Fascinated by this technology, I decided that I would try to make my own gas engine out of mostly 3D printed parts. With these kind of things, it makes perfect sense to start simple, and that's exactly what I did. Basing my design off of a very simple two-stroke means that I can make an engine with minimal amount of parts and hopefully higher reliability. That's at least the idea, I don't know how it's going to work yet. Being a two-stroke means that it's going to operate on a different principle than a four-stroke, so those unaware, I'm going to explain it. The engine first draws in air and fuel from the bottom check valve as the piston rises. Then it is compressed and sent through this tube to the cylinder. The gas is compressed and then blown out the exhaust port. A capacitor will be connected to the spring here and then screw, creating the ignition system. Before I try to assemble the engine, I'm going to put a piston just in the cylinder itself with the sparker, and then I'm going to fill it with gas and see if I can get it to ignite. I've done smarter things before and this is probably not one of them. Oh my god. Perfect! Alright, great. So let's set everything up. Also, yes, I used oil this time. The engine's now set up with an ignition system and gas, ready for the first test. Nah, I'm just messing with you. To better its chances for success, I added more oil to the cylinder to up the compression. And then I even ghetto rigged a tape manifold in hopes that it would force more gas into the cylinder. At the time of filming this, I was under the misapprehension that the gas torch would immediately suck in air and gas into the cylinder at the same time. However, I come to realize it's putting too much gas into the cylinder and not enough air. However, this is what I had to say. What I think is happening is the expansion port is too close to the top. So what it's doing is as it's going upwards, it's blowing all of the gas outwards before it has any left to compress and actually explode. So then let's make a new cylinder and see if it works. I made a new one, but there's no ports on it, because I'm going to do a bit of a science experiment, so I'm going to just get rid of that one. Hey, hey, what? Yeah, it's actually doing something when I turn it like this. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to run, but as you can see, it did fire a couple times, and that was giving me hope a bit progress. Basically, this thing's kind of just a piece of shit, oh. and it's not gonna work at all. So I'm gonna make a four-stroke one, and let's see if that does anything. So right I was. I needed to design something new, and that's exactly why I made this. Whoa, look at that, it's all put together. The benefits of this four-stroke engine over the two-stroke engine is that it will naturally draw in the air rather than needing it to be forced in. It seems like this one is still having trouble running, however I think that can be attributed to many factors. The compression and fuel delivery are probably the two largest ones, so I'm going to tackle those first. To deal with poor compression, the first thing I decided to do was 3D print TPU valves and gaskets. I also made new pistons. As you can see, this is the old one, and a lot of light will bleed through the sides. This new one I made here, only a very little amount of light will bleed through the sides, however that will be compensated by adding oil. This seems to make a much bigger difference in how much compression the engine has. Now the fuel delivery is definitely going to be more of a challenge. My solution was to go from gas into using a carburetor design. 
Here's the little carburetor I put together for this. It's no more than just a little box with a tube. The tube has a constriction in it called a venturi. This is the point at which the fuel will be drawn out of the red straw here. I decided to use some Zippo lighter fluid because I thought that would have been the simplest thing to do. PLA is also resistant to lighter fluid, so that should hopefully work. I also realized that this is going to work a lot better if I use something like a pull start. After setting it all up, I'm going to spin the engine backwards with the carburetor on, and then fill it with water, and then we'll see if we can see any kind of fuel getting spit out of the carburetor. What happened this time is that the sparker wasn't working very well. It turns out that instead of creating a spark between the two screws, what it was doing was it was bridging across the plastic and just melting the plastic, and it wasn't making any kind of actual spark. I don't know if this could be attributed to the fact that I was using lighter fluid, but because of this, I'm going to go back to using gas, in this case butane or maybe even propane, because of its higher combustibility. To test if anything was working, I decided that I would time the ignition at the same time as the exhaust valve opening to see if any gas would blow out. I've worked quite a while on this and I'm just going to say that by this point I think I'm just going to put it aside for a little while. Yeah, so this actually fell over and uh, kind of broke off. So I think that's going to conclude this video, because uh, there's not really a whole lot else I can do with it. Okay, that's all the time I've got. I gotta get back to doing something else.